Okay, and uh, the next speaker is Armando Rastelli, Johannes Kepler University, Linz, from Austria. Please, Armando. Hi, uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks for, for uh, giving me the opportunity to present our work here. And uh, let me express my admiration for for putting uh, together this, uh, this workshop uh, in such a difficult moment. And, uh, uh, and uh, with this, I, I, I'm happy to, to, to start uh, my presentation. So I want to discuss a bit uh, our activities on uh, semiconductor nanostructures for uh, quantum science and uh, uh, technology. Uh, just to, to tell a couple of words uh, uh, where we are. So we are uh, in Linz, uh, Linz is, uh, is here. In Austria, it's a small town uh, between uh, Vienna and Innsbruck, and our activities on uh, quantum science and technology are more recent compared to these, uh, to so to say, the capitals of, uh, of uh, quantum science and technology in, in Austria. And uh, we are networking with, uh, with our colleagues uh, and to, to enter uh, this game. So we have a, a nice uh, campus um, uh, where we have uh, uh, our, our institutes. It's, uh, it's at the edge of, of the city. Uh, we have four faculties and, uh, and uh, physics is within one of the faculties of uh, technical uh, sciences and uh, techn technical and natural uh, sciences. Um, so what we are doing is, uh, uh, is fabrication of nanostructures, or semiconductor nanostructures. We have uh, fabrication facilities like uh, molecular beam epitaxy as shown here. Uh, then we characterize the structures with uh, standard methods like atomic force microscopy, photoluminescence, and we go on for, for, uh, uh, with a modeling of uh, uh, quantum devices based on these uh, nanostructures. And we have a, a nuclear room where we can uh, process uh, these, uh, uh, these devices. And then once we have the devices, uh, we can go on with the uh, quantum optics experiments. And recently we set up a small uh, demonstrator to have a quantum key distribution based on entangled photons. Um, uh, generated by uh, by nano semiconductor nanostructures. Uh, let me show you sh shortly the, uh, the group. So this uh, uh, this is my uh, my work group. Uh, it's pretty international. We have uh, collaborations, uh, uh, especially uh, in Europe with many countries. And I uh, hope there will be the possibility of having collaborations also, also with Ukraine. Uh, there is already uh, some uh, some scientists here. Uh, Eugene is also in the audience. And uh, uh, let me go on. So what we, um, what one of the targets of our activities in the direction of application is uh, in, uh, in the field of uh, quantum communication. And I guess uh, uh, probably the most uh, impressive demonstrations uh, uh, recently on quantum communication are based, as those based on the Michel satellite uh, put, in, uh, put, put in space uh, by, by China a few years ago, uh, where this satellite has been used to, to establish uh, uh, secure keys for one-time pad uh, quantum uh, communication. Uh, first, with uh, uh, using the, uh, the BB84 uh, protocol relying on single photons and then uh, more recently uh, based on uh, entangled photon pairs. And uh, we have seen uh, a couple of talks also on the generation of entangled photon pairs uh, using uh, spontaneous parametric down conversion sources. And this experiment from two years ago showed uh, essentially the establishment of a, of a secure key between uh, two uh, ground stations. And uh, compared to, to single photon approaches, uh, are this, the, the, the nice uh, thing is that here you don't need any trusted relay to establish uh, keys uh, over relatively long distances. And uh, the random number generator, which is usually uh, needed for choosing randomly uh, the measurement, uh, the preparation and measurement basis is here replaced by, uh, uh, conveniently replaced by a simple uh, beam splitter. And uh, so this is a, a very powerful uh, approach to, uh, to, to quantum communication. And it's also uh, entanglement, as you all know, uh, it's, it's very interesting for fundamental science. Uh, so uh, one of the limitations of the, uh, of the, um, of the spontaneous parametric conversion sources is that, um, as it was uh, mentioned in former talk, is that, uh, so if you go to high brightness, so to increase the probability that for a certain uh, time being, uh, you have a pair of entangled, photon pair, uh, of entangled photons, uh, then uh, at the same time, you increase the probability of multi-pairs. And uh, if you don't have um, a number of resolving detectors, uh, this can, be, uh, can produce uh, errors. <clears throat> 
uh, so you have to find a compromise essentially to maximize <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the probability of, a, of pair generation and minimize the, the probability of a multi pair uh, generation. So here is here is where uh, quantum dots or semiconductor nanostructures enter uh, the game. Uh, so these nanostructures can be uh, fabricated by uh, epitaxial methods. And the standard uh, growth method is the uh, so-called uh, Stransky cluster of uh, growth method, where you uh, put you combine two uh, semiconductors with different uh, band gap and different lattice constants uh, on on top of each other. And uh, uh, due to the lattice mismatch between the two materials, uh, nature uh, produces um, by self-organization nanostructures, which are uh, small enough uh, to be able to confine. Uh, the motion of electrons and holes uh, in three dimensions uh, resulting in uh, discrete states similar to atoms. That's uh, the reason why these are also called uh, artificial atoms and uh, different from, from atoms or from, from ions or from Rydberg atoms, so as we have heard uh, this morning, uh, these, uh, these objects, these quantum systems are uh, trapped inside a semiconductor matrix. So once they are there, they can be uh, studied for, for years and you don't need to care about, um, about uh, uh, trapping them. Of course, there are uh, some, some uh, drawbacks. Uh, you have uh, nanostructures, which is embedded in a, a complicated solid state uh, matrix, and uh, this produces uh, some, uh, some additional noise and decoherence uh, mechanisms um, in, in addition to, to advantages. Uh, the nice thing compared to, to atoms or to ions is also that uh, in these uh, nanostructures uh, so if we are looking at, at them as uh, um, a systems to be interfaced with light, they have a uh, high oscillator strength, uh, which reflects in shorter relative lifetimes, which also means that you can operate them at high rates. And um, at least uh, when, you, when you work at uh, sufficiently low temperatures, which means uh, uh, usually helium, uh, liquid helium temperatures, you don't need to go to millikelvin as, uh, as for instance, for superconducting uh, qubits. Uh, so the level schemes which we uh, we are using most of, most of the time uh, is sketched here. So you have the conduction band edge of a semiconductor, which could be, for instance, uh, gallium arsenide uh, with indium arsenide embedded quantum dots. Uh, so here this, this is the uh, quantum dot region and, uh, and the valence band edge. And here, uh, because of the confinement, you have discrete states, and uh, you, because of uh, Pauli principle, you cannot put more than uh, two particles with opposite spins uh, inside uh, this uh, the, on, on these levels. And so the, the simple, one of the simplest excitations we are using is the so-called biexiton uh, state, where you have two electrons and two holes. And uh, this uh, has, uh, in, uh, in, by choosing properly the material, this has a strong um, uh, interaction with light. So you have uh, um, uh, relative transitions uh, generating a photon. And then when the second exciton uh, uh, recombines, uh, then you, you get a second photon. And now the nice thing is that uh, if uh, some conditions are fulfilled, um, be, uh, so the, the optical selection rules for these transitions uh, uh, leave to, to a, a state which is uh, uh, maximally entangled in, pol in the polarization uh, degree of freedom. So what you would like to have is that uh, this intermediate state, which is a so-called bright exciton, uh, is uh, degenerate, which is usually not the case, as I will show you in a moment. Um, so there are a few uh, bugs. So I'll show you back again the, the AFM image. You see here, uh, these quantum dots are randomly arranged on the substrate because we are using self-assembly, and they have also some fluctuation in size. And what you see here is that uh, the consequence of this randomness is that uh, the emission energy of different quantum dots in the same sample is, uh, is spread over a certain range. In addition, uh, you have a spread not only on the exciton uh, recombination uh, line, but also on the biexiton. You see that sometimes you have the biexiton on the high energy side, sometimes on the low energy side. So it's quite a messy system. In addition, if you uh, look at the spectra at higher resolution and using uh, polarization resolved uh, measurements, what you see is that this, uh, this line, this excitonic line, uh, which should be a single line, is actually uh, consisting of two uh, lines which are perpendicularly um, polarized with respect to each other. And uh, this uh, broken degeneracy is a consequence of, uh, of a broken symmetry. So these quantum dots are not perfectly symmetric. Uh, because of uh, alloy processes, for instance, occurring during the, uh, during the growth or uh, piezoelectricity, which is present in these uh, uh, non centrosymmetric uh, uh, semiconductors and uh, morphological asymmetries. 
Uh, so you have this broken symmetry, and this broken symmetry introduces a witch path information, which then uh, um, destroys or, or uh, uh, deteriorates uh, entanglement. So these are uh, several challenges, and we have been working over the years to, to solve uh, one after the other uh, these problems. I want to, to show you how we can address them. So the first thing we, uh, we did um, a few years ago was to introduce, uh, um, to, to switch material systems. So this, uh, this material system, which I discussed up to now, uh, consists of uh, indium arsenide and gallium arsenide um, uh, materials, uh, where we use the lattice mismatch to create quantum knots. Um, uh, so the lattice mismatch is an issue because it produces strain and alloy disorder and uh, things like this. So we, we try to switch to the standard heterostructure, which, uh, uh, which has almost no uh, lattice mismatch, which is the, the combination of uh, gallium arsenide and aluminum gallium arsenide. This is the same heterostructure which has been used for demonstrating the first laser, for instance. Uh, the problem is that here you don't have lattice mismatch. This means that you cannot use the stransky cranston of growth mode to obtain uh, nanostructures. Uh, luckily, there are other ways um, to do it. Uh, the, the method we are currently using is the so-called uh, aluminum droplet uh, patching method. So essentially, we put uh, aluminum droplets on top of an aluminum gallium arsenic surface by evaporating aluminum in absence of arsenic. And then uh, because of, of the uh, arsenic uh, gradient, uh, this interface, uh, then arsenic diffuses into these droplets, then the droplet uh, sinks, so the liquid material sinks into the substrate and uh, produces a, 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 a nano hole uh, by uh, partly recrystallizing at the edges. So what you see is uh, this kind of uh, structures. So a hole, a tiny hole with a diameter of about uh, 40, 50 nanometers uh, surrounded by a tiny ring. Okay, this is not yet a dot, but if we fill uh, this material, this nano hole with gallium arsenide, and embed everything in aluminum gallium arsenide, which has a larger band gap, then we, we get uh, a quantum dot. And then if we look at the distribution of, uh, uh, of the wavelength of photons uh, emitted by these quantum dots, uh, depending on the, on the geometry, so you can, uh, depending on the size of these quantum dots, we can produce a, a certain uh, central wavelength. And we can have a, a very small spread around the central wavelength and also uh, this fine structure splitting, which I mentioned before, so this broken degeneracy of the excitonic levels uh, can be very small. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, 2.5 microelectron volts, uh, which is uh, which is about uh, uh, 500 megahertz, and uh, this corresponds. This this uh, uh, this number is very close to the natural line width of the transitions. So that means that um, by by using this approach, we can create. Uh, quantum dots, which are uh, ready essentially to be used as uh, entangled photon pair sources uh, through, uh, by, by using a, a bit of preselection. So we would need to take uh, quantum dots with sufficiently small fine structure, but it's easy to find them compared to other uh, growth methods. One, uh, so as I said, uh, this, uh, these nano structures have different issues. So one is the random positioning, and there are, uh, there are, so there are uh, bugs and fixes. And one of, the, uh, of uh, one way to cope with this random positioning is to uh, produce markers on the surface of the of the semiconductor structure, and then illuminate uh, the full uh, the full uh, semiconductor um, uh, the full surface with a, uh, for instance with a blue LED as uh, as we are doing here, and then collect the fluorescence image. So you see uh, these quantum dots uh, as uh, bright spots, and uh, uh, even if you are uh, using uh, far field uh, optics. Uh, by fitting uh, the centers of these uh, uh, of these peaks uh, uh, and uh, measuring their position uh, with respect to these uh, markers, we can get uh, positioning accuracy uh, down to down to about 10, 20 uh, nanometers. And then once we know the coordinates of a quantum dot and uh, we look at the spectrum, so we, we say, okay, we like this quantum dot, we can build up a device around uh, preselected quantum dots. At this, at this stage, what we are doing is that uh, we, are we are collaborating with the informatics department and uh, having uh, students uh, uh, expert in uh, artificial intelligence or, uh, um, uh, or in, the, in, the in the development of algorithms uh, capable of making decisions of which dots are nice uh, for, for future or for further processing. Uh, so the, the, this, uh, this by exiton, now, if we go to the optics lab and we want to excite this by exciton, uh, the way we can uh, the way, way we can address this by exciton is to use a, a two photon excitation process. So we tune a, a laser to an energy which is half of that of the by exciton. We create this by exciton and then we let it decay to the exciton and then to the ground state to generate to generate the two photons. 
So the typical spectrum looks like this. So you have two lines, so one corresponding to the bi-exciton, uh, two exciton photon, and the exciton to the ground state. And what you see here is a function of, uh, of uh, uh, pumping power. What you see are oscillations, and these are Rabi oscillations because this uh, um, preparation process is uh, coherent. And uh, the preparation fidelity is about 90%. So 90% of the times we pulse our uh, system with typically pic picosecond pulses, and we get a um, we get the system initialized in the bi-exciton photon. Uh, if we look at the spontaneous decay uh, dynamics, uh, we find times of the order of 100, uh, 120 picoseconds for the bi-exciton and about uh, 200 uh, picoseconds for the exciton, which means that uh, uh, if we prepare the system in the bi-exciton state, uh, the full time needed for the system to relax down to the ground state is of the order of uh, 300, 400 picoseconds. Uh, which means that then uh, after it, on average, so after this uh, 400 picoseconds, we can initialize again the system and getting another uh, pair of photons. This means that we can have a, a gigahertz uh, operation is possible uh, relying on this uh, fast uh, decay cascade. Uh, a question um, is, what I, what I mentioned is the main interest in working on these quantum systems compared to uh, nonlinear um, and nonlinear crystals is the fact that they are quantum emitters. So if you uh, engineer your pulse uh, to be shorter, so being significantly shorter than the duration of the cascade, you have uh, just one photon or one photon pair per pulse. And uh, uh, to quantify this, uh, uh, we use the Humbery brain Brown and Twist uh, experiment. And uh, uh, you can, um, um, so this, this is a histogram of uh, correlation events between detection events at these uh, two detectors. And you see here the absence or almost absence of events at zero delay uh, tells you that we have a, a single photon emitter or a single pair emitter. And this uh, G to zero, which quantifies, um, or which is related to the probability of having more than one photon per, per pulse is of the order of seven times uh, 10 to the minus five, which is uh, uh, practically uh, as good as uh, for real atoms. So these are uh, um, uh, quantum emitters, in spite of the fact that they are embedded in a semiconductor, in a, in a solid state matrix, they are as good as real uh, single ions or uh, single atoms as uh, single photon emitters. This is a good news. Uh, there are some bugs, as I said. For instance, it, it can happen that one of these uh, structures captures an electron or a hole, um, and and then this uh, um, this the presence of this charge uh, then hinders the excitation to the bi exciton state. Uh, but this problem can be uh, can be cured by embedding the quantum dots in diode structures. So with a diode, what you, with a PIN diode, which is the same kind of structure you have in, in a light emitting diode, uh, you, you can tune uh, deterministically uh, the occupation state of a quantum dot to make sure that it's uh, charge neutral most of the times. So, and then if you tune the, uh, the voltage the proper values, you can make sure that the quantum dot is, uh, is in a neutral state and can be initialized through a laser here to the bi exciton stage, which then decays to the exciton uh, state. Um, maybe um, I think I'm running out of time already. Uh, just that, let me tell you uh, about uh, the, the performance in terms of uh, entanglement. Um, and uh, uh, what we use is, uh, as I said, is by exit and exit and cascade uh, to make sure that this fine structure is completely erased. And, uh, and also in principle to, to be able to have more than one quantum dot emitting at the same wavelength, uh, we have uh, developed uh, as a, a stress uh, uh, engineering platform where we can engineer the, the in-plane stress of um, uh, in the quantum dot. And this is sufficient essentially to engineer independently. Uh, so to bring this, uh, uh, this uh, splitting to zero and at the same time to tune the energy, the emission energy of, uh, of, uh, of the quantum dot which is important at some point if you want to scale up the, the, the hardware. You don't want to have different colors um, for the different uh, systems. So this is achieved by having uh, a piezoelectric actuator, which is microprocessed, and we can apply different voltages to these uh, fingers. And on top, we have, you see here, this uh, gray stuff here is a, is a semiconductor membrane with a, a quantum dots, and we can stretch essentially the, the quantum dots in different directions. And this, is, this allows us to, to make sure that the symmetry is respected, so to have optimal entanglement generation, and then at the same time to, to control the color. And uh, what you see here is now a, a, a tomography measurement. So we send the, the exciton photon 
to one detector and uh, the biexiton photon to another detector. And we analyze the events uh, in, um, um, uh, by using different uh, projectors, so by projecting them in different polarization bases. And for instance, what we expect is that we expect uh, strong correlations uh, of uh, right circularly polarized photons with left circularly polarized photons and no correlations with right, right. And that's what you see in the experiment. But uh, the, the nice thing of entanglement is that you can rewrite the state using different bases. So you expect, for instance, uh, strong correlations in uh, horizontal, horizontal um, polarization and no correlation in HP and so on, diagonal, diagonal. And then out of these uh, correlation measurements, you can reconstruct the density matrix for the two photon state and uh, quantify the fidelity to the maximally entangled uh, state, which we expect. And we find uh, values when we uh, erase the fine structure, uh, we find values uh, close to to a uh, to 100. You know, so it's now 97. percent. So also the concurrence is at this uh, level. And as far as I know, this is still the, the highest value uh, observed so far for uh, for quantum dots, and we attribute it to to several things. That uh, first of all, that we are able to to achieve to reduce the fine structure splitting. And uh, perhaps uh, most probably we have also some aspects uh, which depend on the material uh, we have chosen, so of gallium arsenide rather than, um, than uh, indium arsenide. Uh, with this kind of sources, we have implemented uh, quantum key distribution by encoding in the, two, in the polarization state of the two photons uh, a quantum key. Uh, and using the, the BBM uh, um, uh, 92 protocol. So we have uh, two uh, stations, Ellis uh, in our building here, and uh, Bob in this other building. And Bob looks like this, actually. It's, a, it's just, just a box with uh, four detectors for detecting uh, two different uh, uh, bases. And it's, uh, it's just placed on, a, on an office table uh, and uh, the analysis is done with a, the with a laptop. Uh, this is a uh, this is the result of a quantum key distribution over 13 hours uh, using um, uh, privacy so key, key shifting and, and privacy amplification error correction and privacy amplification uh, we can achieve um, uh, a nice uh, performance. So you see the quantum uh, bit error rate is of the order of two percent, which is uh, sufficiently low to to perform uh, the BBA uh, M92. So it's it's very good. So it's error correction. Uh, is still needed, of course, uh, but it, it brings our rate um, to by fat, so to a factor of two lower than uh, the, the average key rate. Uh, one thing you notice here is that uh, the bit rate which we have achieved up to now is of the order of uh, 80 bits per second. It's very slow, but this is actually uh, a technical limitation. It's just due to the fact that we are uh, working with non-optimal sources, so we have to take out light out of the uh, quantum dot structure in, a, in an efficient way. And here, um, there are uh, ways to do it. So one uh, approach we are following together with colleagues is to embed the quantum dots in, in uh, photonic structures, which uh, promise uh, extraction efficiencies, uh, like extraction efficiencies of the order of uh, more than 90% over a broad spectral range, and also uh, allow uh, the acceleration of the relative decay rate through the Parcell effect and this allows, uh, in the end, to, to further enhance uh, the rates. And at some point, uh, we hope that the main limitation will be actually the, the, uh, the, um, the dead time of the single photon detectors. And uh, just to conclude, I want to mention that these uh, uh, quantum dots are not only uh, nice sources of, uh, of photons of light, but they can be used also as uh, uh, storage uh, systems for uh, for spins, uh, this is a recent work uh, performed in the in the group of uh, Meteata Ture in uh, Cambridge, where they use uh, our gallium arsenide quantum dots, and uh, specifically a trion, negative trion in in uh, gallium arsenide quantum dot, uh, to look at, uh, at the elect electron spin coherence uh, in these systems. So you can prepare uh, the quantum dot with a um, uh, to, to be uh, charged with a with a single electron, the electron can be um, can be initialized. So the electron spin can be initialized with high fidelity, about ninety six uh, percent. And uh, measurements using um, uh, spin echo uh, techniques uh, allow them to quantify the coherence time, and uh, uh, they achieve the value of uh, uh, T two of uh, hundred microseconds, which is about two orders of magnitude longer 
than whatever has been seen up to now uh, for strained uh, quantum dots. So this is uh, attributed to the fact that we have uh, much less uh, strain in homogeneities and the interaction with the quadrupolar uh, nuclear spins is, uh, is much, uh, much reduced. So with this, I um, want to conclude, this is uh, uh, the future. So we want to, uh, we are working on the production of a, of a device which should perform at the same time uh, charge control. So to be able uh, to, to make sure that we can use our quantum dots, for instance, as uh, entangled uh, photon sources, uh, they have strain control. So to, to obtain optimal uh, entanglement and brightness, which is uh, featured by, or produced by uh, photonic processing. Uh, with this, I want to thank you for your kind attention. And if you have questions, I'm happy to discuss. Thank you very much, Armando. Uh, let's ask questions. Uh, okay, while we are waiting for questions, uh, I, I wanted to ask from, uh, let's not from material side or, uh, uh, actually, I, I understood that uh, if, if, if first you show on this, uh, how it's called, Stransky Krastanov, yeah, quantum dot, and then you switch to antidot, right? And, and, and then you have shown uh, the results from antidot, yeah, uh, I mean. And, uh, but the, and you are studying just uh, the device based on single antidot, but the, the question was whether it would be interesting uh, to you to make them ordered. I mean, uh, to have some ordering of this uh, uh, anti-dots and uh, quantum dots. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, it's still a quantum dot. So we start with a, an anti-dot, but then we fill it with gallium arsenide. So it's, it's, a, it's a real quantum dot is just upside down. Uh, this is the, the shape of the barrier. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but the size, uh, the, the first I understood that, yeah, that yeah. you really have one atom, yeah. but the size of the second one, uh, what is what is the dimension? What, uh, what is the size really? Is it, is it size. Single, single atom size? I mean, yeah. I know the, the size you see it here. So it's about uh, yeah. uh, let's say uh, the the width of these uh, nano holes is about uh, uh, fifty nanometers, and mm -hmm. the depth is about uh, uh, eight nanometers. And this uh, is yeah. now the uh, the negative cool. the negative shape. Uh, so it's essentially the container for the quantum dot. Uh, so when you fill it with gallium arsenide, the shape you get is uh, is is this, and that's a, this, the shape of the dot of the quantum dot is the same as the, the shape of this hole. Does it uh, does it matter the shape or only the size? Oh, yes, yes. So the, so the size uh, mostly determines uh, um, uh, so the depth, uh, which is the shortest dimension, mostly determines the emission wavelength. Uh, the lateral size mostly determines the, the spacing between excited states. And the shape uh, determines uh, the, um, the, the symmetry of the system. So especially if we want to use them as uh, sources of entangled photons, we, we need to have a, 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 a symmetric, highly symmetric shape. And this is what, we, what you see in this parameter here. As soon as the shape is slightly elongated, then this uh, fine stretch of splitting gets, uh, gets bigger. So there is a, a really a one-to-one -one correlation between the, uh, the, the shape or the structural properties and, uh, and the electronic properties. But, but but do you then, have a reason or attempts to make them uh, regular? Yeah, they, they are already let's say uh, regular uh, in the in the sense of uh, position. You mean? Yeah, in position. Okay, yeah, yeah, we have done that. Uh, so there isn't a problem. So we know uh, in principle how to make them. So essentially, you could make these nano holes with uh, electron beam lithography and etching. Uh, and then uh, the problem is that the surface. Uh, is must be exposed to normally to to air uh, and to ambient uh, conditions, and also the etching produces uh, uh, defects at the surface, and then in turn these these defects produce a deterioration of the optical properties. So it turned out that uh, actually was it also involved in that um, uh, about uh, 15, 10, 15 years ago there was a lot of effort to to uh, to develop methods to position quantum dots. These methods work. Uh, the problem is that the optical properties of the, of the generated quantum dots are uh, worse than the, the, the methods uh, rely on purely self-assembly. So short, short answer is uh, it can be done, but it would need uh, very big investments uh, of effort uh, to, to bring the technology to the same quality level that, uh, that is provided by self-assembly. So if there is an industrial interest, I'm pretty sure that this is feasible 
But at this stage, uh, I would uh, not encourage, uh, let's say, my PhD students to, to develop, to spend time in, in positioning quantum dots because uh, it's very difficult to get something new. Okay, thank you very much. I, I see we have rising hands, so, so uh, Redim, please. Yeah, uh, Armando, hello. Uh, nice talk. Uh, I have uh, one question which just came to my mind because of the project we have together. Uh, yeah. Like when we like when we excite these uh, dot, uh, when we pump the the process there uh, to generate entanglement, like is it still like weak pump? It means you do it resonantly, right, or above bend? It's it's resonant. Yeah, it's resonant. It means if I increase the pump, is there a chance? Did you see at any configuration that there is this like twice absorption, twice emission process? Could you go to this regime, or this is so far away that we can be safe from this? Uh, you mean twice absorption in the quantum dot, or uh... in the quantum dot? That you go to the upper state, yeah. means you generate basically uh, two pairs instead of one pair. Uh, yeah, there, there is uh, actually. Well, uh, what happens is that you see if you look at the at the population. So if you look at the intensity, you see Rabi oscillations. So we yeah. can. Invert, exactly. uh, the, the population by going to to pi pulses, and yeah. if you go to uh, to uh, two pi, uh, you get an increased uh, probability of having uh, of having two pairs. Yeah. Uh, so, but this depends very much on the on the length of the of the pulse because what you what you need to do is to uh, to excite the system, and then the system uh, then uh, recombines, yeah. and then it has it has to have still filled. Uh, so the, the laser field must be still there to re yeah, it. Exactly. So it turns out that uh, in the end, actually, it was a study done, uh, done in Rome with, uh, by uh, in Rinaldo uh, Trotta's group. Uh, yeah. and Francesco is perhaps still in the audience, where they have seen that this, uh, this uh, multi-photon generation is still very low in, uh, even okay. under this, these conditions. Yeah, it means if we go precisely to the pi pulse, then we are very safe. Yeah, right. You don't need to think about that. Right. Even and even in two pi, essentially, you have an increase, but it's not. Uh, it's not, not dangerous. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. So yeah. that that's the main advantage of these quantum dots. You can operate them at, at saturation, and yeah. uh, still be uh, be on the safe side. That yeah. You yeah. Have yeah. 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 Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I saw another hand from Alexander. Or it's not already. Okay, so thank you, Armando, very much. Thank you very much.